All right, Ken. So um, the focus shifts back to you. H- how do you invest yourself? What are your strategies? And I understand you're probably someone in his early 30s, right? Um, what is the investment thinking that you're adopting at this point in time in your life? Yeah, so there's a lot of people, I would say, like me, early 30s, recently married, ex, uh, uh, planning for kids, and then also um, a salary man, right? Like uh, not, not running my own business, uh, so taking salary every month. So white collar people like me, there's a lot in KL, a lot of, in Malaysia, right? So the way I do it is first, I, I want to be debt free. So whatever excess cash I have, I really plow into my, my mortgage. I hope to retire within uh, less than five years. So so that at least whatever from a risk management standpoint, I can be risk, I can be debt free. Secondly, working for Stash Away, I, I really do use my own product as well. So I have two portfolios. One is balance, one is high risk. So for different things, one is medium term, one is long term. So uh, the risky one is equivalent to 100% equities. And the balance one is equivalent to 60% equities, 40% bonds. So so that way, you know, at least part of my salary every month goes towards stash away. And I'm very, very happy with it. Since launch, I've been invested, obviously. And then I've gained 15 to 17% per annum, which I think is, is decent. I mean, I'm very calm about the whole thing. I don't really need to, to worry too much about it. And then after that, because I'm working in fintech, I do see some opportunities to invest in some um, fintech companies in Malaysia as well. So sometimes they, they just happen by chance. Sometimes they are through equity crowdfunding platforms. So I, I, I have a little bit more insight into fintech. So I, I like to think that I can put some, some, some money aside to these uh, rather illiquid uh, opportunities. But if they go big, like if they become unicorns and all that, then I have a small piece of that. If they go public, you know, that'd be nice. Um, and then small part of my portfolio, I do put aside to try different platforms, things like peer-to-peer lending, which I've been using since uh, since it came out um, four or five years ago, because they give you, uh, in theory, 10, 12% uh, returns on your, on your uh, basically your, your debt or credits on SMEs, but because of COVID, I'm a bit more selective on that because SMEs are falling like flies and you really need to pick the best out of the best. No one you're investing in. Um, and then the last one I dabbled early last year, a little bit, you know, less than 5K into Bitcoin, which has done quite well. That one I've taken some profit and I guess that's my copy tier money for this year. Lah. So still have some money there, letting it run but I'm, a big part of my portfolio and my wealth goes into minimizing debt and also uh, broad portfolios like, like, like Stashway and some other unit trust. Yeah, okay, so I'm no financial advisor, right? But um, it just seems to me that you're quite uh, low risk for someone of your age um, mm. and, and by investing in your property and trying to get to debt-free status there, it seems that it's extremely conservative because obviously interest rates are very low now and some people will be using that cheap money uh, era to, to really ramp up the investments. Um, th- would you be representative of the norm, being this conservative? Yeah, I, I, I think there is, a, there is a spectrum, right? And I, I don't have data to show what people are doing holistically with their money. But what I do have data on is how people are investing in non stash away. And there are a lot of uh, anecdotal evidence and cliches out there like, oh, old people are uh, more conservative. Um, women investors are more conservative. But what we're seeing on the platform is that a lot of people pick portfolios that they like uh, according to their, their, their preferences. So we see some young people picking conservative portfolios. We see some middle-aged people picking super high risk so, so I think across the board, the you know people are quite balanced like, because it all it all balances out. So sixty forty is the most um, the, the most popular portfolio on on the stash away. sixty percent equities, forty percent uh, fixed income. So I would say I am more on the conservative side, but that's because I don't pick um, single stocks where right? I leave it all to, to fund managers and things like that. Because I think it's a 
it's a it's, it's more about my career, right? I, I used to work for Kazana and then I moved to Afin Huang and there are a lot of restrictions on what an uh, investment professional or what an investment banker. And now me now as a capital market representative can hold, right? And the kind of information that comes in. So there's a bit of well, like circumstances of my career and a bit of habit as well. So I never really got into the habit of like picking individual stocks. Um, so, so that's just, just, that's just me. Uh, they, everyone has their own kind of preferences. I, I know early on you talked about how everybody should have their number, right? Um, do you have a number and how do you come to that number? Right. So, um, you can look at the holistic thing. Uh, what does your net, what do you want your net worth to be? And then you can have a more specific number, which is, uh, say your retirement number. So the net worth number is really what you want to be. Are you, are you like Bruno Mars, you want to be a billionaire so bad? Or do you, you know, want to be something more realistic, right? So I don't have a net worth number that I'm aiming for, but a retirement number, I think some, somewhere north of, uh, north of uh, two to three million is, is, is okay for retirement. So you can draw six to 8,000 every month for 25 years. So for that to, to, to come up with that number, basically there are some inputs, basically how far are you away from retirement? Um, how much compounding do you think that your assets will, will return in your retirement years so that your, your retirement balance can also earn while you're retired? And then uh, how much you're going to spend, obviously, every year during your retirement. So um, all, this, all, all this is not proprietary. You know, there are retirement calculators out there, which I've used, and come up with, you know, anywhere between two to three million in today's money, you know, because inflation really uh, skews things a little bit. So when, when I reach my retirement, I think that number will be, will be much larger than two or three. I can't do, I can't do uh, compound maths in the morning, but... Uh, two three million in today's money, I think it's somewhere safe for retirement. 